Hi and welcome back to another video. In this video I'll be using my Old Holland watercolors which have been sadly not very often used as of late. This video was requested by a viewer and um, I'm always open to suggestions guys so if you have any more video ideas, please don't hesitate to write something in the comments. So for this um, video, I decided that it would be more useful to see the paints in action rather than do just a plain swatch video. If you would like an updated swatch video, um, let me know and I can do that for you. I did find these paints a little challenging. I didn't expect it. Now, I've also been out of practice. I haven't been painting a lot lately, so that may be a factor. But I think it was also just that um, they wet really easily. So if you put your brush in the pan, you pick up a lot of pigment and um, I found this a little bit intimidating and so I think I started very very lightly and I ended up putting on more layers than I intended because of that. So I had um, these little illustrations done and they're from um, a sticker set that I'm working on. Um, in case you didn't know I'm building a stationery shop and you can follow my progress on Instagram. I did end up um, using three primary colors and I'll list it in the description. So I think that my recommendation would be and what I should have done is prepared, um, if you have a ceramic palette that has wells or even a plastic palette that has wells, you should prepare some of the color already pre-mixed with water um, that you're going to use to get the kind of density of the color the way that you want it before you start. Because yeah, like I'm saying, if you go straight into the pan, you're just going to pick up a ton of pigment and then you're going to have to rebalance the water to pigment ratio and that takes time. So just to speed up your process and to make sure that you're getting the colors and the intensity that you intend, I think it would be a good practice, especially with these paints. I know some people do that anyways. Um, I don't usually but um, I usually use drier paints and so I don't come into this problem necessarily. So here I realized that I really didn't get the intensity of color that I could have and so I just did a few little like swatches um, for myself and also to show you guys that this the color can be so much more stronger well, can be so much stronger and much more vivid um, I was just intimidated <laughs> now I thought the the illustration came out kind of cute but I didn't think that the color was um, that telling of, of the pigments or it wasn't a good example. So I decided to do another one and I had another little drawing from a sticker set. So I thought I would use that since it was done already. And once again, I transferred it onto watercolor paper using a light table and India ink. Yeah, ink. 
I did end up using uh, the warm sepia and the Payne's gray to do a little toning up in there. So for the second illustration, I was hoping to have cleaner color lay and um, less layered so that you can see the quality of the paints a little clearer, hopefully. And I didn't restrict myself as much with the color choices and just let myself like kind of free paint a little bit more. Now, I do run into some trouble with um, trying wet on wet. So in the first example, you'll see here on the coat, um, I get some blooming. And I think this is partially because I'm impatient and um, I didn't let the layer dry, but that it was also because the timing of these paints is a little bit different. So they stay wet a little bit longer. And um, usually by the time I finish with an area and I come back to it with my other paints that I'm used to, um, I, would, I would know that that surface was ready to lay paint into, but it is a little bit different with these paints. I suppose it's, to do with the honey binder and it keeps them wet longer. It also makes them move more in the water and they blend a lot, um, a lot more. So I think you have to kind of really find that sweet spot right before they dry and then it, and then lay in that wet on wet if you're trying that technique. But um, you could use a hair dryer to speed up that process, but then again, you still want the paper to stay wet. So I think for myself, just that's used to a bit drier paints. So it was something that I was unaware of and um, something that just need to get used to with timing. I really enjoy the the color payoff of these paints. Um, they're very lively. Um, I do need a little bit more practice to get the full benefit of of painting the way I usually paint. Um, once again, it's a timing issue with layers, but what I learned doing this little demo is that it's crucial to let your layers dry, especially with with these kind of paints, if you're going to be glazing. And um, just be aware of timing and water to pigment ratio. <laughs> um, I think it, it's a little bit more finicky or just different than what I'm used to. So I did a little googling and uh, realized that it, it's not a honey binder, but a gum arabic. But it must just be the way that it's produced. Anyhow, it's very glidey. <laughs> so Old Holland paints are well known for their um, quality, but uh, not so easy to get. I had um, 
I was fortunate enough to live in Germany for several years and before I left and moved back to Canada I did a bit of a, an art haul of supplies that um, I knew would be harder to get here or more expensive and I kind of splurged a little bit. It was my goodbye Europe present. <laughs> so I did pick up a few of these um, paints and um, I know that a lot of people are curious about them. I decided to add kind of like these little blue accents in the collar and I laid the color in uh, using a wet on wet technique but the color just bled and it has like a very nice effect but it didn't have that kind of spot of color and accent that I was intending. So. This is just something to consider. And these were all the pigments that I ended up using for both of the pieces. So I haven't really, well, I try not to get um, too crazy with the color just because, as I said, I, I haven't been painting very much lately and um, I didn't want it to get too messy. Well, thank you for coming by everybody and um, spending some time here. I hope uh, you enjoyed this little Old Holland paint demo and um, if you have any comments or requests you know what to do, leave it in the comment section below and I hope you'll come back for the next one. Until then, have fun painting! Bye!